next for SketchUp, we've redesigned the user interface and asset editor to make working in your scenes faster and more intuitive. In this lesson, I will walk you through these new features and demonstrate how V-Ray Next can speed up your workflow while making it easier than ever to get stunning looking images. To get started, you'll see here that we have a simple scene set up already with a lamp inside table and two cups on it. Let's click on the V-Ray icon to open up the asset editor and explore some of the updates we've made to the user interface. One of the new powerful features we've implemented is the new asset tree view in the outliner. Now, I can quickly list materials, lights, geometries, render elements, and textures in a unified way and visualize their shader hierarchy. As you can see, all of the assets in the scene are listed by categories in the outliner. In our scene currently, we have three types displayed, materials, lights, and textures. To make things easier to identify, every asset in the editor now has a small icon in front of its name, depending on its type. In addition, you'll see that some assets here have a small arrow to their left. These are new drop-down menus, collectively known as the Asset Tree View, and they are available for lights, geometries, render elements, and textures as well, providing a simple and unified way to visualize shader hierarchies throughout V-Ray Next. Now, we can conveniently view all child textures for a material simply by clicking the drop-down arrow to the left. If we take a look at the top of the Asset Editor here, you'll notice that these three categories are highlighted blue for the materials, lights, and textures. The others are grayed out, which indicates that they don't contain any data yet at all. To add more assets, I can simply right-click on each category at the top, which opens a drop-down menu containing the respective V-Ray assets for that category. If you've used previous versions of V-Ray, you may also notice that two additional categories have been added in V-Ray Next, one for textures and one for render elements. If I click on the Render Element tab, we can create multiple assets quickly without closing the menu by holding Control and left-clicking on the elements we want. Let's add the lighting and reflection elements. Now, you'll also see the category is no longer grayed out at the top. If I decide to delete the elements, I can select several with Control and click, or use Shift and click to highlight a range and right-click to delete them. In this case, let's leave them for now. In V-Ray Next, I can also easily choose which different categories to view by holding the Control key to select a combination of them. Note that tabs containing data that we aren't currently viewing appear white instead of grayed out. I can also easily view all the tabs containing assets at once simply by pressing the shortcut Control A. Again, you'll see the Render Elements category has appeared down below here as well since we created the lighting and reflection elements a moment ago. Next, let's see what other options we have to create assets. In the lower left-hand corner of the Asset Editor, we have a small circular button with a plus icon, which can also be used to create assets. The asset categories here are the exact same as the tabs along the top row, so if you're used to previous versions of V-Ray, you can still use this option. Now, let's expand the left-hand flyout menu. Here, you'll find an extensive material library, which is helpful when you don't want to create a material from scratch. It's organized by categories containing materials that you can either use right out of the box or use as a starting point for building your own customized material. We also have another asset creation menu above. If I twirl down the Create menu dropdown, you'll see once again that it offers the same asset categories to choose from as the row of tabs on the right. In the dropdown, you can quickly preview specific categories or even view all assets together just by selecting Create at the top. You can also easily search the library for any specific types of assets. For example, if I type Bezier, you'll see that it presents me the option to create a Bezier curve. And if I type Metallic, I can create a PBR Metallic material. Okay, now let's see how we can create materials. In this category, you'll see that there are a lot of different utility materials to choose from, but most of the time, you'll probably want to use the generic material. To get started, we can simply drag and drop it into the asset tree to use in our project. First, I'm going to change the name of the generic material to Blue Cup Material by right-clicking on it and selecting Rename. Next, let's expand the Flyout menu to the right. Here you'll find the properties and parameters for the current asset, as well as the live swatch preview that displays the material. Now let's add a texture by left-clicking on the Diffuse Texture Swatch and choose Bitmap. I'll select a texture called Blue Cup Diffuse and you'll see that the Live Swatch Preview updates immediately 
to display an isolated preview of the texture itself, which is useful if we need to make tweaks. Now, back over in the asset tree, you will see that an expandable arrow has now appeared in front of the name of the material. Once again, this menu makes it so that we can easily navigate through the asset's hierarchy, so that you can get a sense of what each asset contains without having to go into individual texture slots. This also makes it easier to navigate between textures much more quickly, allowing you to copy and instance the textures between different materials or assets more easily. What's more, you'll see that depending on the asset or texture I select, the live swatch continually updates to provide us with a relative preview. This makes it easy to make tweaks to each individual asset or texture, as well as see how those tweaks impact the overall result, as I'll show you in a bit. Now, returning to our blue cup material, you'll see that the live swatch display on the right is showing our material with the blue texture that we loaded in. Any changes we make to the material will be updated in the preview above so that you can quickly get a sense for how the material will look when rendered. For example, let's drop down the reflection menu here and slightly increase the reflection color parameter a bit. And you'll see that the material updates in the swatch to display a light source reflecting on it. We can also select from a variety of different preview modes in the upper right hand corner which is helpful for getting a better feel for the material, depending on your specific use case. Since I will use this material for one of the cups on the table, I'm going to keep it on the generic preview mode. Down here just below the swatch, we can also toggle between basic or advanced settings for the material parameters. As the name suggests, the advanced mode contains more parameter options that you can tweak to create an even more customized result. That said, the basic settings are still very flexible, while making it simple and easy to work with. Okay, let's now go ahead and apply the material to the blue cup by selecting it and then right clicking on the material and choosing apply to selection. Then, let's right click on the diffuse texture swatch again, and this time I'm going to go to the wrap in submenu here and select the color correction. The wrap in option allows you to quickly put a new texture in the texture slot, in this case the color correction, while placing the original texture, the blue cup diffuse, within the new texture. This makes it easy to plug one texture into another one so that we can then make modifications to the original. Using color correction, we can change the appearance of the blue cup diffuse texture and see the results in the live swatch preview without needing to use any other software. We can also easily reuse assets we've already created. Selecting the blue cup material again, I can simply drag and drop the color correction into the reflection color swatch. If I choose paste as copy, it will create a separate copy of the color correction that I can tweak independently. In this case, let's choose paste as instance so that any tweaks I make will update all instances of the color correction automatically. Now, to organize my maps a bit better and make things easy to work with, let's select the color correction in the asset tree and rename it by right clicking and choosing rename or just double clicking on it. I'll call it diffuse CC. And let's click on the drop down and rename the blue cup bitmap inside Diffuse. Okay, now let's twirl up the drop down arrows and select the blue cup material once more just to inspect our work in the live swatch preview. I think that looks ready to use. Now, I can save this material as a VR mat file to my hard drive for later use in the future by clicking on the Save Asset to File icon at the bottom of the Asset Editor and selecting a folder. You'll also see that I've already saved some materials in this custom library folder. Let's now choose Save to save it to the library and then explore how we can use other materials I have in this folder. In V-Ray Next, we now have the option to load in custom libraries by simply clicking the little folder icon on the bottom left. Custom libraries are an incredibly useful way to organize and share assets, which can be imported into other projects. In this case, I'll select the folder called Custom Library, which as you saw a moment ago, contains several VR mat files I've already organized in advance as well as our blue cup material we saved. You'll see that I have also saved different types of assets such as lights and render elements. All of these assets can be used to create templates which can even be shared between colleagues. For example, you can have network locations allowing for a single unified library for all members of a team to access. Now, let's decrease the reflection glossiness of the blue cup material in our project and then close the right hand flyout menu. If we then drag and drop the newly adjusted blue cup material back into the custom library on the left, you'll see that I'm given the option to replace the version in the library. Or, to save it as a new material or to another location, we can right click on the blue cup material in the outliner 
and choose Save As. Meanwhile, if someone else on my team is working on a project using the same custom library and adds their own new material to it, all I need to do is right click on the custom library and choose Refresh to load in the latest asset files they've added. This option to refresh an open library is especially helpful when you have a project with the library already open and someone else from your studio is adding new assets to the library at the same time from somewhere else. Okay, now you've seen how with the redesigned asset editor, you'll be able to load in custom libraries, refine your materials quickly using the Live Swatch preview, and easily manage your textures with the new asset tree dropdowns to speed up your workflow in V-Ray Next.